We're going to talk a lot more about zinc as it's used in sunscreen lotions and products, but this video in particular is going to be focused on zinc as it's used in textiles. Now it's true that practically speaking, any textile that you place between your skin and a UV source will block some UV from either getting through the fabric to your skin or scattering it so that it doesn't actually affect your skin directly. The question is always how much UV protection are you getting from those textiles? There are several ways to add UV protection to textiles, and we'll touch on each of these in different videos. However, this video is going to be focused primarily on, on how zinc can be added to textiles to actually add in UV protection and what that means. So one way that some textiles will add in UV protection is simply by adding zinc to the textile itself. So it's actually embedded within the textile. The goal of adding zinc to textiles is essentially to take a textile that may not actually have natural UV protection or adequate UV protection for your skin and actually embedding it in the textile to give it more protection. There are lots of different UV filters that can be added to textiles and they're added in different ways. For this video, we'll talk about zinc, but in future videos, we will talk about the other organic and inorganic filters that are out there. To really envision how this occurs, if you take a textile and think about this blanket as like a magnified version of a textile, where you can actually see through the actual fibers that are there. Now zinc in particular, when it's embedded into a textile, is done during the process of engineering that textile. So if you imagine that these cotton balls are zinc oxide particles and that this is a really magnified version of a regular textile, now zinc is actually embedded in between the fibers of the textile while it's being manufactured or engineered. So it's actually taken and embedded in between so that once it's actually sealed and processed, it will actually hold that zinc in there. So you take a textile that's really lightweight like cotton or bamboo and then you embed the zinc within it and what you'll have is a regular textile that's cotton but there's zinc particles within there. Once it's processed, then the hope is that that embedded zinc will stay within the textile and continue to confer you with UV protection or whatever other claims the product might make because it's actually embedded in the fabric. So that way this lightweight textile can actually add UV protection. So what happens next? You have this textile that has zinc embedded in there and the quality of this process will vary widely amongst manufacturers, but the thought is that it, once it's embedded in there, it's meant to go through washes and stay in that fabric. Now my lab has actually studied these textiles and looked at them to see if that actually occurs. We looked at several commercially available textiles that have claims of having nano zinc or zinc embedded within the textile and we put them through the process of actually testing their UPF at the beginning at purchase and then laundering them to see if that zinc stayed in there. Good news is that of the textiles that we studied, we did find that they did retain their UPF of 50 as they claimed through the washes. We actually found that within the first 10 washes, however, there was a significant drop off in the UPF. You can look at this graph and see that we had a textile in particular that went from a UPF of over 500 and within the first 10 washes dropped down to around 200 and did kind of hold steady in that range. But our concern was what happened in that first 10 washes if it dropped off so significantly Either there was either some other finish in the textile that washed out during that process that was conferring some added UV protection that we weren't aware of. That, because again, we have no access to ingredient labels when it comes to textiles. Or there's a possibility that some of that zinc was actually released from the fabric during the laundering process, which stands to reason is very possible because yes, it's embedded in there, but it is still a nanoparticle, it can be released. And if that's happening, then you probably get down to a baseline level of UV protection that's there, which is good. But at the same token, what's going on with that zinc? Is it actually staying there or is it coming out of the textile? This is a really difficult question to answer and one that we're actively studying, but not only does it happen with zinc, but the thought or worry is what if it's happening with some of the other filters that are added to textiles, as well as quite frankly, other finishes that can be added to textiles. Once they're released, the question is they could either be released into the laundering process, meaning they're being washed out, but also during the process of either swimming or sweating, if they are released onto your skin or into your swimming pools or other places, what is going on with those chemicals that could be released? 
Why does this even matter? Sunscreen story is really an evolving story and one I talk a lot about because the history of sunscreen, why it was created, was not necessarily to prevent skin cancer. It was really created to allow you to spend more time outdoors without getting a sunburn. And the actual story with skin cancer and sunscreen evolved at the same time and we found afterwards that, that yes, sunscreen was protective against certain rays of UV that we know are linked to skin cancer, but we're also learning that there are other rays, the UVA rays that sunscreen does not protect us against that have their own independent link to skin cancer, either directly or indirectly. And when we look at the filters that have been used over the years, they each have their own story of what role they've played in terms of our health and the environment that we need to be very mindful of as we're weighing these risks and benefits. As the story evolves, this conversation needs to always factor in your health and the environment. Now, if zinc is coming out of the garment, then it is either ending up on our skin or in the water supply or both. We do not have the privilege of an ingredient label on our clothing items. We simply don't know whether or not zinc is present. Zinc itself, as far as a sunscreen filter, is generally recognized as safe and effective by the FDA, so we do tend to favor it. I myself favor it over other ingredients that are out there. It has an extremely low, if at all, possibility of being absorbed into our bloodstream. The question about zinc is not about zinc alone, however. The question definitely comes up in terms of zinc combined with other ingredients. Now, if zinc ends up on your skin and you are using other sunscreen products, for example, you have other sunscreen products on your skin from an outside source that may or may not contain zinc, but other sunscreen filters. So when you're using zinc in combination with other filters, unless they've been studied in the formulation that's out there that you're using, adding zinc to other formulations can sometimes impact the stability of the sunscreen products that you're using. There was a study done that showed that when you take a regular formulation of sunscreen and add zinc to it, it can impact how stable it is in sunlight. When it comes to the environment with zinc, it's really difficult to evaluate the impact of zinc on our environment independent of other sources of zinc. Yes, zinc is coming from sunscreens. It could be being washed out of sun protective clothing that uses zinc. There are studies evaluating zinc, especially in its nanoparticle form, but there's a lot of conflicting data out there. So this really is a work in progress. How would you even know if zinc is actually embedded in your textiles or not? Because again, there is no ingredient label on your clothing items to tell you what's in those textiles. Since there is really no ingredient label, we usually are left to product claims to figure out if zinc could be present. Zinc actually can provide UV protection, but it can also confer an antimicrobial finish. So a lot of workout clothing, for example, might have claims about antimicrobial factors to them, and we'll talk a lot more about antimicrobial claims on clothing and what that even means as well. When it comes to those two particular claims, UV protection and antimicrobial properties of textiles, unless it's otherwise stated on the garment to tell you what other ingredients could be used, there is a possibility that zinc may be embedded in the textile to achieve those finishes. When it comes to the environment, there are so many other sources for zinc in the environment that it's really, really difficult to isolate the source of sunscreen or sunscreen in clothing that's actually embedded in clothing as an independent factor from other sources. This is a really difficult aspect of zinc in clothing to evaluate because we simply don't know what happens next in isolation of other factors. It's an evolving story and one that we're actively studying. And generally speaking, I would argue that at this point in time, zinc tends to have the most favorable profile compared to other UV filters that are out there simply because it seems to have the safest overall profile. I would still recommend limiting your exposure to sunscreen, lotions, creams, sticks, and products. When you look at sun protective clothing, always inquire as to what's conferring UV protection in those clothing items. Ideally, there is no added UV chemical finish because then we don't have to worry so much about what could be released from the garment. If you do find a company that's treating their textiles, I would say that zinc probably has the safest profile amongst the other UV filters.